Hello, you're welcome. So this is the last video uh, on the special function. So in this video, I only want to solve, I want to use the method of Frobenius to solve the hypergeometric differential equation that we also call Gauss. So uh, at the end of this class, I will give you one assignment on the gendry, like I've promised in the class. So let's go straight to the business. This, as you can see on the board, this is an example of, this is a typical equation called hypergeometric differential equation. So our task is to use method of Frobenius and like I've said in the class, don't just proceed. You need to tell us certain things before you uh, go ahead with the method. So now you can see here we have x1 minus x, hmm? then second derivative. And like I can say, you know, this is actually second other linear ordinary differential equation. Now, the one thing about this differential equation is that alpha, beta, and gamma, they are parametric constants. I'm talking about this alpha plus beta plus one here. They are actually constants. So take note of that. We have them here again. Alpha plus beta multiplied by y. They are constants. They are parametric constants. So let's divide both sides by one x, one minus x. So by the time you divide both sides, you have this. Now, this is exactly my p of x now. This is my q of x. So now look at what I put there. I said it is worth noticing that the aforementioned hypergeometric differential equation has singularity. And what are the singularity now? Look at this very well. You notice that when x is zero, that's a singular single, that's a singular point of this particular problem. And at the same time, when x is actually one, when x is one, you know one minus one will give you zero. Then is zero times this one, the same thing applicable to this one. So x is 0, x is 1, they are the singularity of this particular differential equation, but that's not all. It remains another singularity, singular point, and that is when x is infinity. When x is infinity here, you notice that this one will still give us, uh, if we make this one, we actually give this one to be in, uh, to be infinite. Hmm? So, we cannot say that um, x equals to 0, 1, and infinity, they are the singularity of hypergeometric differential equation. And what does that mean? That means that when x is there, when x is when x is infinity, this term here and this term here will actually give us a problem. We make the problem to be infinite and we can actually remove it. We can actually remove it. So which it has a singularity point and it's removable singularity point. So we can refer to this one as a uh, regular singular point. So let's proceed now. Then that means that we can use series solution. So we assume the solution 0 to infinity a r s k plus r. So don't forget that because we have x equals to 0, hmm? that is why we, because this is actually x minus 0. I will together let me put bracket as you can see now. It is actually x minus 0. Are you, are you can you see that? Okay, because x0 is one of the singular is a singular point of this particular problem. So we can use this series now. So let's differentiate this one. When you differentiate 2, you have 3. Look at that. k plus r will come down here, then you subtract 1 from the power of x because we are differentiating with respect to x. So you differentiate again the second time, then you have k plus r, k plus r minus 1, then you subtract 1 from the power. Now, what is the next thing now? Now, look at it. This is the expansion of the problem now. As you can see, this one, by the time you multiply this on x minus x squared, hmm? then by the time you expand this one, by the time you expand the question 1, this is what you get. Now, this is now. So we return everything back to this problem. So look at this now. This is it now. This is a substitution. We have this. We have this. We have the y dx. We have the y dx. And we have our y here. Now next is for us to expand. Expand in the sense that you know, this one is x to the power 1. And this is x to the power minus 2. So plus 1 minus 2 will give me minus 1. That is how I obtain this power here. So this one will also come inside here. That is 2 minus 2. We go. So you have k plus r. And this one again, we have gamma k plus r. Then a r s k plus r minus 1. And this one again, x a will come here. We give us x is for k plus r. So this is how we obtain this expression. So we need to proceed now. Do you remember the next step now? The next step now is this. We factorize. Because we already have two powers of x now. This is 1. k plus r. k plus r minus 1. K plus R, K plus R. So we only have K plus R minus 1 and K plus R. So we factorize. So you can ask now. This is it. And don't forget, you take the coefficients. You take the coefficients. 
So what is next now? We look for in this here equation. How do we get it? We set r equals to zero in every part in equation five. So when you set r equals zero, don't forget. By the time you set r equals to zero, you are no longer talking about series again. So this series will go. So you have a naught s k plus k minus one because r is zero here. So that's how we obtain this. And here too, by the time you set r is zero, r is zero, then you have this. So a again, you have zero, zero, then you have this. Now which is the lowest? Power now, lowest coefficient of x. This is the lowest coefficient, so we set the coefficient equals to what to zero. So that's why we have a naught equals zero. So we solve this one now. So meanwhile, know that a naught is not zero but other. So we have k squared minus k then plus gamma k. So we have this. So the next thing is for us to now use quadratic almighty formula to solve this. What is almighty formula says that in this case now our a is one, our b is gamma minus one, and our c is what is zero. So we use this almighty formula now. The almighty formula says that we have k1 to be plus hmm? and we have k2 to be, to be minus. So let's substitute our a, b, c into this. So we obtain this. So let's proceed again and next one. Look at it. The square root way, we take care of this square. So what we have is gamma minus one. That's why we have gamma minus one here. Let me call it, let me call it it red. And this one again, square root, we cancel square. So you have gamma minus one multiplied by minus one. That is outside this minus one. So this one will give you minus gamma then plus one. So I'll proceed again. What is the next I'm going to do now is that um, I will consider this. I have this now. Hmm? So with what I'm having here, you can see clearly now. So that is okay. So what is the next thing now? Uh, you can see from here. Minus gamma plus 1, we give you 0. 1 minus 1, we give you 0. So you have 0 here. This one again too. Minus gamma, minus gamma, we give you minus 2 gamma, then plus 2 divided by 2. So K1 is 0, then K2 is minus gamma plus 1. Hmm. Now, we're almost true. We have the solution now. And don't forget, we proceed now. Next is to obtain the relation between a1 and a0. In this case, you know, I have to explain. If you are under, uh, if you are writing this one in the exam, you don't need to show me the relation between a1 and a0. Take note of that. In that inside the exam, you, you, let's assume, you know, you don't need to write a1 and you don't need to show the relationship the relation between a1 and a0 under exam tension. Just go straight. That is, if I ask, if I don't ask, fine. If I ask, but take note of that. But if I don't ask, but nevertheless, please take note of that. You don't really need to show the relation between a1 and a0. So just proceed and go straight to the reoccurrence formula. But here, let me show you that of a1 and a0. So how do we get that now? You focus on equation 5. This is my equation 5. This is my equation 5. So you focus on this k plus r minus 1. And you focus on k plus r. How do we make the two to be equal? That is, if we set r equals to 1 here, hmm? and we set r equals to 0 here, you notice that both of them will now have the same power of x raised to power k. So that means that everything here, we set r equals to 1. That is how we obtain this. Look at it, k plus r, k plus 1. r will become 1a. Here too, we have 1. Here, we have 1. Here, we have a1. And what about this one too? In this one too, we have this expression. So a not xk. Now, what is the next thing now? The next thing now is for us to uh, look at this and this. Do you know that they are not the same thing? One thing I've done here is this. I actually, you know, this one will give me A1 because I'm setting my R to be 1 in the first summation and I'm setting my R to be 0 in the second summation. So if you look at this very well now, the next thing is for us to factorize X raised to power K, S raised to power K, they are in the 2. So S raised to power K is outside. Now look at the bracket now. You can see now that I'm using another bracket now. Can you see the bracket now? So I have X raised to power K outside. Now, here is the next question now. Which one is the lowest power of x? We only have one x raised to power k here, so that would be the lowest anyway. So we equate the remaining coefficient equals or equals to zero. So that's how we obtain this. So now the arrangement. The arrangement means that my you know, this one will go to the other side. So we have this. So what's next now? You divide by this. So this is the relation between a1 and a naught. So let's go straight to the reoccurrence. How do you get the reoccurrence now? This is our equation five again. We still go back to equation five. From this reoccurrence now. We want this, we equate this one to be equals to this. Then here, this one, we know that this one will actually give us the lowest coefficient. So let's put star here now to differentiate the power of x that will give us the uh, lowest, then k plus r. So from here, you now see that k will take care of k, then you have r star equals to r plus 1. So this r plus 1, you substitute it in the first summation. So by that, you substitute in the first summation, uh, Take note, in the second summation, you don't really need to do anything except here. That is why you change it, uh, this one, to r equals to 1. 
Are you getting that? Take note of that. Because R plus 1 will come here. This is the one that will give us the lowest power of X. So, but for this one, you will not do anything except this one that will give R equals to 1. And that will make us to have equal thing. So, now let's start now. From here, this one will give us K plus R plus 1. This is how we obtain this. Look at it. This R here. Then look at this one. R plus 1. Then you have minus 1 that is there before. Then you have gamma plus K plus R plus 1. So, here too. You now have R equals to 1. Then this one will give me a, a R plus 1. Then what about this one? This one will give me k plus r plus k plus r plus one minus one. So we proceed. So for this one, you see now that everything you have here is still the same thing here. K plus r, k plus r minus one, alpha plus beta plus one, k plus r, then plus alpha beta. So and I will change this one to r equals to one. So what's the next thing now? I will factorize. You can see now that um, did I no 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 the next thing is for us to actually uh factorize you still need to factorize because here yeah, look at this one k plus r plus one minus one you give me k plus r mm -hmm. so you now see that this power here and this one they're actually the same thing let me change the color red let me change the color to red they are now the same thing so what is the next thing we're going to do now is this we factorize so by the time we factorize so we factorize so uh sorry rain is uh, it's raining outside so that's why you are hearing that noise uh, so we have this now so after this we are going to push it and take the coefficient to be zero so this is the question now so when that this one is zero then you have the remaining equals to zero so here yeah, ar plus one and ar so let's proceed to page five now so if that is the case this one will go to the other side then you have equals to here now let me put it in red color equals to so what's next i'm going to do now is this I'll make a r plus one the subject of the formula. So I will have k plus r, k plus r minus one. This one divided by this. So that is enough. Now let's now begin to look at it. There are some things we are going to do. We are going to do some substitution in the denominator. Look at the denominator. This is the denominator now. This is the denominator. What is going on here is this. We have k plus r plus one, k plus r. But look at it. we have k plus r plus one here. We have k plus r plus one here. So we can factorize. So by the time we factorize k plus r plus one, we are going to have this one, then plus gamma. Are you getting me now? Plus gamma. So that's how we obtain this. Look at what I'm saying. You factorize k plus r plus one. So you now have k plus r, then plus gamma. That's how we have to obtain this. So we return this one numerator. This one will go back to the denominator. Now let's look at the numerator again. We can actually do something. This numerator here, we have k plus r, we have k plus r. We can factorize k plus r. So what we now have now be k plus r minus 1 then plus alpha plus beta plus 1 that's what we obtain then plus alpha beta so what is the next thing then it's equals to you have k plus r plus k plus r plus alpha plus beta then plus alpha plus beta that is what we have in another so we return this one so we cannot take everything back to the recurrence formula now, this is now our recurrence the recurrence formula now so, but we still need to proceed we still need to simplify this how do i know look at the numerator k plus r a Hmm? I can use it to multiply this k plus r. I can then I will have k plus r squared. Now this k plus r I can use to multiply alpha to give me this one. This k plus r I will use to multiply beta to give me k plus r plus beta then plus alpha plus beta. Now looking at this, you will now see that what we have here is still the same thing as k plus r plus beta plus k plus r plus alpha. If you expand this, this is what we get. So let's return it back. So equation six is now our recurrence formula now. So let's go to case A. Now, case A is when k equals to 0. Remember the solution of the initial equation. So in equation 6, so we substitute k equals to 0 in this case. So by the time you set k equals 0, this one becomes 0, 0, 0, 0. That's how we obtain our equation 7. So now let's start changing our r now. When r is 0, we have this. When r is 1, we have this. Of course, we can't stop because this a1 here, we need to substitute a1 here. So you substitute a1 here, you have this. Now, of course, you can just rearrange. Now, when R is 2, you have this. You can't go. You have to substitute A2. That is that. Substitute A2 from equals to this one, which is from here. So, you have this again. Now, when R is 3, you have this. You cannot go with this. You need to substitute A3. So, you have this again. Now, that is our A4. Now, let's go back to the series solution. We have, we have this one. So, if you want to express it, hmm, break it down. Then, you have something like this. Don't forget when this is when r is zero this is when r is one this is when r is two this is when r is three this is when r is four hmm? so
So we will now substitute A0, A1, A2, A3. We substitute everything back. So we have this. Now, we return when K is 0. You know, this three solution is for when K is 0. So we take K of 0 here now. We obtain this. So now, you factorize A0 to come outside. So this expression, we have it. So now, let's take everything inside this bracket. Let's call it function of alpha plus beta, alpha, beta, gamma, and x. So we have, so definitely, solution 1 is the same thing as A0, F, alpha plus beta plus alpha plus x. So let's go to the second case. When k equals to 1 minus gamma, remember the second solution of the initial so in equation. So we take this one back to our equation 6. So we have this. So from this, we have this. So now the next thing, you say when r is 0, when r is 1, when r is 2, don't forget, you substitute everything back. So you have your series solution, and at the same time, you come back here, then you give me. So you return our k equals to 1 minus gamma in the solution. So you factorize. Then the next thing is this everything inside. Let's call it function. Let me put break down a. So this is it now. In this time, I am now having function of alpha plus one plus alpha plus one minus beta gamma, comma beta plus one minus gamma, two minus gamma, then x. Now the function is this, and so we can ask that solution y two is equals to this. Now know that we have two solutions y one and y two, and they are linear independent. So in that case, we should don't need the same constant. So let me take a to be a naught in the first solution. Let's b cos a naught. I'm talking about this in the second solution. So I can say that my final solution y of x is what? Okay, it will now be a a. Then this one will give me uh, b. So that is it. So this is the final solution. Now. So this is where we are going to stop now. So which are the best? So the assignment is this. Listen to me very well. The assignment is this legendary differential equation solve it explain everything line by line are you with me now assignment legendary differential equation solve it line by line don't jump any step show all the steps clearly thank you very much wish you all the best bye bye